Hello. The main objective of this presentation is to show you a practical application of the equilibrium condition for momentum in a real case. Particularly, this real case is going to be the structure of a tower crane. First of all, we will have a short review of the static conditions of equilibrium. As you probably know, conditions of equilibrium tells us that we have to have the sum of forces and moments equal to zero, as we are going to work only in the two-dimensional case. The equilibrium of forces can be written as these two equations you have here, only two equa equations for each one of the two axes we have. If we talk about moments, the equilibrium of moments in a two-dimensional case allows us to this equation of a sum of bending moments equal to zero in one point. There is an important uh, property of this equation telling us that the momentum has to be zero not only in the origin but in every point of the structure. And this momentum is a vector which direction is perpendicular to the direction of the plane formed by the loads. And this is why, and to simplify the drawings, we are going to use this curved arrow to represent the direction of the rotation that this moment would produce in the structure. This bending moment would create a deformation in a beam, for instance, like the one you can show, see sorry, in this simple drawing. Now that we have reviewed a little bit the conditions of equilibrium, we can start applying the condition of sum of moments into a crane tower, like the one you are seeing at this picture, for instance. To do that, we will start by making a simulation of the structure, simplifying it like you can see now. We will put, first of all, the counterweight blocks situated at a distance from the axis, which is the length of the counter jib. And on the other side of the crane, we have the load we want to transport, situated at a distance from the axis of the crane tower that we're going to call LQ. Let's simplify that drawing. So we can start now with the calculation of moments in one point. We will choose this point B, which is the basis of the tower axis. Having all these forces and distances, if we write this equation of sum of moments in B equal to zero, we have to see at this side the moment we have is the counterweight blocks multiplied by the counter jib length. And at the other side of the axis we have the load we want to transport multiplied by the distance from the axis. To do that, you have to remember that the calculation of moments in the two-dimensional case is so simple because we only multiply force by distance. But we always have to take into account that the distance has to be in the perpendicular direction to the force which is creating the moment. In this case, this is very simple because both forces are vertical. So, as you can see, distances are quite simple. Well. In a crane tower, you know that the counterweight blocks is fixed and also the counter jib length is. So, if we look at this equation, this product has a constant value for each one of the towers, crane towers we can have. And this means that the value of this product, load multiplied by load distance, has to have also a constant value. We can represent this very clearly in the diagram of load and distances in a tower crane where you can see we can have a maximum load at a minimum distance from the axis and this relation can be kept like that until we arrive to this point this point, this length, it's a point of inflection in the diagram because if we want to continue having the load in a bigger distance than that from the axis we will have to reduce the value of the load as you can clearly see in this diagram. Arriving to this value which is called the load at the end and it's the situated at the maximum distance the jeep allows us to do. 
So, as a conclusion, application the equilibrium of momentum in a tower crane allows us to say that the product load multiplied by load at distance has to be constant. And this means at the minimum distance we can have the maximum load, but at the maximum distance we have a limitation which is called the load at the end of the tower crane. Thank you very much for your attention.